Hi, my name is Donna Curtin. Welcome to Breaking Weight Loss Barriers, where we break weight loss barriers and make weight loss dreams come true. Today is Saturday, June 27th, 2020. It is time to let you know how I'm doing with weight loss and with lowering my blood glucose level. Then I will start the new segment, Let's Talk About Obesity, where there is a lot of talk about interesting topics relating to obesity matters. So last week, Saturday, I set a goal to bring my blood glucose level down to normal range of 70 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. To achieve the goal to reduce my blood glucose level, I plan to do up to a seven day variation of a water fast. Though my focus for last week was not on trying to lose weight, I knew that by fasting to lower my blood glucose level, weight loss will occur as a fasting benefit. On Saturday, I began the week with a blood glucose level of 291 milligrams per deciliter. It took five days, 17 hours and 45 minutes to normalize my blood glucose level to 109 milligrams per deciliter. Once my blood glucose level was within normal range on this past Thursday night, I broke my fast. After having my meal, my blood glucose levels spiked above normal range, which is the normal thing that happens after anyone eat a meal, whether you are type two diabetic or not. However, after about two hours of eating for a person who do not have diabetes, the blood glucose level will normalize. This is not necessarily so for the type two diabetic. It may take much longer for the blood glucose level to reach a normal range when trying to control diabetes naturally. For me, after I ate my meal on Thursday, I had to wait 19 and a half hours before my blood glucose level returned to normal range again. Then I ate Friday evening. Today, it has been about 19 hours since my last meal. I refuse to eat until my blood glucose level is within normal range. Right now, my blood glucose level is 149 milligrams per deciliter. By midnight or sometime tomorrow, the blood glucose level will be within normal range. And at that time, I will set aside a time to have a meal. Well, with all this water fasting and intimate fasting to normalize my blood glucose level, the fasting helped me to lose weight. Last Saturday, I weighed 277.3 pounds. As a result of using water fasting and intimate fasting between meals, I lost nine pounds within a week. My new weight is 268.3 pounds, and I feel good about weight loss and about being back on the weight loss track. With the hope of losing more weight from today up until next Saturday, I am going to only eat when my blood glu glucose level is within normal range because I refuse to live with high blood glucose level anymore. I do not want to end up with other diabetic health issues. Keeping this meal time schedule, which requires intimate fasting between meals, is a great way to keep my blood glucose level within normal range and it will do great for weight loss too. I look forward to this week uh, to doing what must be done to reap the rewards and to share the results on next Saturday. Thank you for joining me on Saturday's Weigh In. Now for Let's Talk About Obesity. The topic for today is mental distress hinders weight loss. Now for Let's Talk About Obesity. The topic for today is mental distress hinders weight loss. Are you having difficulty losing weight and keeping it off? Are you tired of the same old weight loss and weight gain cycle? Many Americans who are obese struggle with trying to lose weight and keep it off. If losing weight and keeping it off were easy, we would not have an obesity epidemic here in North America. Why is it so difficult to lose weight and keep it off? Some people equate the inability to lose weight and keep it off 
due to poor diet and lack of exercise. Eating less, exercising more, eating less fat and switching to low calorie food have not shown effectiveness in treating severe obesity in the long term, according to an article that I read on the National Institute of Health website titled, Mechanisms of Weight Regain Following Weight Loss. So what is the most effective weight loss remedy that will keep the weight off if diet and exercise is not working? Dr. Nora Volkow, a psychiatrist who is currently the director of the National Institute of Drug Abuse, which is part of the National Institute of Health, stated that the best way to overcome obesity is through cognitive therapy and behavior modification. Basically, the best approach to losing weight and keeping it off is to get rid of the negative patterns of thought about yourself and to change your behavioral practices to yield favorable outcomes. Many obese people may be hindered from losing weight and keeping it off because the psychological effect of obesity may hinder their ability to stick to a diet and exercise plan. The reason why diet and exercise are not effective over the long term to treat obesity is because the psychological effects of obesity keeps getting in the way of obesity intervention. Massive amounts of obese people have been psychologically scarred from internalizing the harm and anguish from enduring discrimination, humiliation, stigmatization, and ostracization due to their body image from within the American society and from friends, parents, and spouses, etc. Body shaming people is embedded within the American culture. A popular American view that is socially accepted here in the US is that obesity is due to the individual's lack of self-control and self-discipline, and that the resolve to obesity resides within the individual. Many Americans think that if you're obese, then it is your fault, and that if you do not want to be obese, it is your responsibility to overcome obesity. But scientific evidence proves that obesity is not the fault of the obese individual. Though there are many contributors to the development of obesity, precisely hormones drive appetite, it affects when you eat, how much you eat, and hormones control satiety. Genes also may contribute to a person's susceptibility to weight gain. Certain diseases and medications may be a contributor to obesity also, to name a few. Based on scientific evidence, the popular American view that obesity is the fault of the obese individual is a mere myth. If you're carrying the notion that obesity is your fault, it's time to learn of the many causes of obesity and solutions to obesity to get to the root of why it is difficult to lose weight and keep it off and to discover the many facets of obesity that must be navigated through in order to free yourself from obesity. Though to lose weight and keep it off is a difficult task because of the many parts that you must learn to navigate through, today we will begin the navigation through the complexities of freeing oneself from obesity. Today's objective is to encourage the obese people to examine what may be hindering them from losing weight and keeping it off. Let us go deep into the psyche of our own mind and examine what negative thoughts that you may believe about yourself and the world that is trapping you in behaviors that keep you in a state of obesity. Could it be that you see yourself from the same point of view as the popular American view sees you, which rely upon weight-based stereotypes to identify your personality? 
What you think about yourself will affect how you feel about yourself and how you interact with a weight loss plan. So it is of great importance to free your thoughts of negativity about how you view yourself. Take a true look at yourself and do an assessment of your own personality to see if you have fallen victim to the weight-based stereotypes due to your own personal view of being in a state of obesity. Answer the following questions honestly. Do you believe that obese people are lazy? Do you believe that obese people are weak-minded? Do you believe that obese people are most likely to be unsuccessful? Do you believe that obese people are unintelligent? Do you believe that obese people lack self-discipline and self-control? Do you believe that obese people are non-compliant with weight loss treatment and that is why they cannot lose weight and keep it off? Do you believe that no one will ever want you because you're obese? Do you believe that obese people should wear uh, black to look like a silhouette so that they can't be seen? Do you believe that obese people shouldn't wear bright colors because it would show up their fat too much? Do you believe that obese people are sloppy? Do you believe that obese people are unmotivated? And last but not least, do you believe that stigmatizing obese people may instill motivation to engage in healthier eating and exercise behaviors? According to another article that I read called Obesity Stigma, important considerations for public health. Some research has found that psychological distress may bring about the idea between stigma and binge eating, where experiences of stigma increase vulnerability to poor psychological functioning, which in turn increases risk of binge eating behaviors. Coping responses in reaction to weight stigma may lead to unhealthy eating behaviors. Overweight and obese women who internalize negative weight stigma reported more frequent binge eating and refusal to diet compared with overweight or obese adults who did not internalize stigma. Adaptive ways to cope with weight stigma can help with weight loss outcomes. So get rid of the negative patterns of thought about yourself. By doing that and not internalizing negative weight stigma may help to heal the, the psychological scars as well as decrease binge eating, and may aid in increased motivation to stick to a diet and exercise plan to lose weight and keep it off. I hope that you have enjoyed this segment. Let's talk about obesity. We are now at the end of this session. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. I hope my story encourages you towards the fulfillment of your weight loss transformation. And if this program is inspirational to you, please return for more inspiration. And remember, what we do today will pay off tomorrow. May we all achieve our weight loss dreams together. So be it.